Okay, welcome back. This is question uh, number four from January 2020, International A Level P3 at Excel. And um, here we have a question about uh, differentiation. We have been given a function f of x equals 2x plus 5 squared over x minus 3. And of course, x can't be 3, otherwise it would be undefined. It says find the, in the, the sorry, not the inverse, find the, the differential of the function f, the derivative of f, f of x, or the gradient function of f of x, all mean the same thing, in the form of p of x over q of x, where p of x and q of x are fully factorized quadratic expressions. Okay, so now, what I have to do here is you have a quotient of two um, separate functions, so I have to use what's called the quotient rule. For the quotient rule, I call one of them u. So I'll call the, the numerator, it has to be the numerator actually, u. And the denominator has to be v. And I need to find the derivative of u, so I need to find what du dx is, which is going to be found, I can use it, the chain rule, probably be easier, I could expand it if I wanted to, but the chain rule is much easier to deal with, so I'm just going to multiply by the power. This is the type of function which is a polynomial type of function, so you multiply by the power, take one from the power, and then you multiply by the derivative of what's inside the function. So if you differentiate x plus 5, you get 2, so you multiply that by 2. So that's going to give you 4 times 2x plus 5. I'll leave it like that for now. And v, if I find the derivative of v, dv dx is going to be just 1. Okay, so the, the, um, the what's it called? The quotient rule is basically, it's something which is given in the formula book, actually. But I like to just set my work out like this. I put u and u dash underneath, v and v dash underneath. And then for the quotient rule, you should make sure that you start from that side. It's v times the different derivative of u minus u times the derivative of v over v squared. So I'm going to multiply these two together. So I'm going to get 4 times x minus 3 times 2x plus 5 minus, and then multiply these two together, I'm going to get 2x plus 5 all squared. And then I'm going to have divided that by, I'm going to have the square of v. So it's x minus 3 all squared. Okay, so now let me simplify that a bit. Okay, I think I need some more space. I'll, that will probably go on the next page. So let me just simplify this a bit. Okay, so now what we have here, I have to simplify. Now I'm not going to simplify by expanding because that's going to make a, a big hash of things. So what I'm going to do is, I can see 2x plus 5 is a common factor in this numerator. Because this, this is something important in this, um, I can say this is f dash equals something important in this topic you see this comes up a lot where you have to simplify it they ask you to simplify them as factorized versions so what I can do is I can see the common factor in the numerator is 2x plus 5 you have the same bracket uh, to two different powers the one with the lower power is the highest common factor so I'm going to write 2x plus 5 as my common factor then I'm going to open a bracket and then inside here 2x plus 5 times something gives me this expression here well it must be 4 times x minus 3 and 2x plus, 2x plus 5 times something gives me minus 2x plus 5 squared, so it must be minus 2x plus 5. I'll keep that in a bracket to protect it from the minus sign. And that's all over x minus 3 squared. Now what I can do is I can simplify what's inside this bracket. Okay, I can simplify what's inside this bracket. So I'll have here 2x plus 5 on the outside in the bracket. And here I'm going to have 4x minus 12 minus 2x minus 5, minus 2x minus 5 over x minus 3 squared. Okay, let's continue. I definitely need the next page for the next question, so I'll just keep this down here. Okay, so now what I can do here is I can simplify what's inside the bracket fully. So I have 2x plus 5, and this is 4x minus 2x, which is 2x, and minus 12 minus 5, which is minus 17, over x minus 3 squared. And this is how they wanted it. They said where px and qx are fully factorized quadratic expressions. So they're fully factorized 
quadratic expressions. So there's the answer for f dash of x. Now on to part b. And now for part b, it says, hence find the range of values of x for which f of x is increasing. Okay, now, um, the range of values for, for which f of x is increasing, okay, is going to be, well, f of x is increasing as long as its gradient is positive. So f of x is considered increasing, okay, when f dash of x is greater than zero. Some, in some, um, yeah, there's a difference of opinion. Some people say f of x is greater than or equal to zero. Some people say f of x is greater than zero. Okay, I personally like to say that when it's greater than zero, but some people will also mention this. So both of these would be acceptable. If you have greater than zero or greater than or equal to zero, both of those are considered um, the, correct. Okay, in the mark scheme, they're both considered correct. So you can have either of them, it's, it's no problem. Okay, but I personally go for f of x, uh, the f dash of x is greater than zero. When the differential is greater than zero, it's increasing because its gradient is positive. If its gradient is positive, it means it's going up. That's what it means. So we got to find the range of values for which our function f of x is increasing. Now, we already found um, the differential of f of x, and I've got that over here. Okay, that's what we found in part a. So... I'm going to use this and I'm going to solve the inequality where this is greater than zero. Okay, so we have to solve the inequality where this is greater than zero. So you have 2x plus 5 times 2x minus 17 over x minus 3 squared is greater than zero or greater than or equal to zero, depending on your opinion, but both of them are acceptable. Now, if we had an inequality and this de denominator was not squared, we would have had a problem because to get rid of this denominator, to get rid of this fraction, we have to multiply both sides of the inequality by x minus 3 squared. Okay, get rid of the denominator, multiply by the denominator. And if you multiply an inequality by something which is unknown in terms of its sign, you have a problem because if it was negative, the inequality sign has to change direction. However, as x minus 3 squared is definitely greater than or at least equal to 0, okay, at least equal to 0, therefore we know that it's going to be something that's not negative, so we don't have to change the sign of the inequality sign, okay? In fact, we, don't need, we shouldn't say equal to 0 because then this whole thing will be undefined, so x minus 3 squared is definitely greater than 0, we know that for sure, okay, so therefore this is a... Um, valid thing to do. We can multiply both sides by x minus 3 squared because it's something which is definitely going to be positive and it won't uh, cause uh, any problems with the inequality sign. If it wa if we didn't know, if it wasn't squared, then we couldn't do that. Okay, and then we would have to, for example, we would have to then square whatever was there, we'd have to square. So we'd have to square both sides of the equation. So we'd have to then square the whole thing and then multiply what was in the denominator and it would become really complicated then because this whole thing would also be squared. But here we don't have to worry about that. We can just quite happily say that means 2x plus 5 times 2x minus 17 is greater than 0 with confidence. We don't have to worry the inequality sign won't be affected because this is definitely something which is not negative. Okay, so now we can continue to solve this by... Well, it's already factorized for us. I guess that's why they wanted to leave it in, in that factorized form. So what we can do is we can say, okay, either 2x... Uh, now we have to use uh, the the fact that we've got a um, quadratic inequality. This is not a normal inequality. So we have to first find the places where this equals 0. Okay, I don't know why that's not coming out very straight. We have to find the places where it equals 0 first. So we're going to do that. This is solving quadratic inequalities. Well, what we learned in P1, actually. Okay, so you have a... I'm not straight. I'm going to just make a sketch. All right. So I know that the critical value... So first I need to find the critical values. So the critical values are when this equals 0. So you have when x is equal to minus 5 over 2, which is minus 2.5, okay, is one of the critical values. And the other one is when... Um, x is equal to 17 over 2, so that's when x is equal to 8.5. Okay, so it's going to be somewhere over here. 
and we can see this is a smiley face so it's going to be something like this I'm going to go down it's going to cross the y-axis somewhere down there we don't have to worry about this this is basically 7, uh, 50 plus 35 this is minus 85 we don't have to really worry about that what we care about is these values here so we want to know when this is greater than zero well when it's greater than zero this is a gradient we what we have here is the, is the is the graph of this function that we're trying to solve this inequality and we can see that this is above the the x-axis this is above the x-axis when x is less than minus 2.5 and when x is greater than 8.5. So the solutions to this inequality are x is less than minus 2.5 and x is greater than 8.5. Now, how do they ask us to find the range of values of x? So that's fine, you can write it like this. Okay, if you want to write it in set notation, you could say x is such that, you could say x, um, x is less than minus 2.5 so you should say here or and you can say or x is greater than 8.5 that's how you would do it in set notation okay something like this and here if you if you write the answer like this okay if they're separate like if they're separated um, solutions they're not co combined in one you have to say x is less than minus 2.5 or x is greater than 8.5 those are the places where this will be true. So those are the values for which f of x is increasing. Whenever you have x is f uh, x is less than two point minus two point five, or whenever x is greater than eight point five, if those values are in the function, it will be an increasing function. Okay, it will be one where the gradient is going to be going up. So there we have the answer to part B. Okay, so there's the answer to part B, and now I'm going to go on to part C. Part C is again about um, differentiation. At the same time, to find the maximum point, the maximum point is where it turns. So to find the maximum point, we have to differentiate this. We have to find g dash of x. So the maximum is going to be when g dash of x, the, the, the differential is equal to zero. So we've got to find what g dash of x is first. So we have g of x is equal to x times, and I'll write this ready for differentiation, which is x times 4x to the power of a half. And now, again, we can use here um, some technique of differentiation. Uh, we're going to use here the, the product rule. The product rule. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll call one of them u. So u is x and the other one v, which is uh, sine 4x. I'll put it like this in brackets to the power of a half. So we've got to find what u dash is, and which is 1, and v dash, which is a half times sine of 4x to the power of negative a half times the differential of what's inside the function. Now, the differential of sine of 4x is 4 times the cosine of 4x. Because you differentiate sine of something, you get cosine of the same thing, and then you have to differentiate again by the differential of what's inside. You have to multiply again, sorry, by the differential of what's inside the function, and the differential of 4x is 4. So it's like the reverse of the chain rule. So this is going to give you a half times 4, which is 2. So you have 2 times cosine of 4x over, you can say, sine of 4x to the power of a half. So I've just simplified that. Okay, so now when you're using the the product rule is basically you have to it's almost the same as the the, the quotient rule but you just multiply v dime times u dash and and u times v dash i like to do uh, the same way for both of them so I, I i would like to do this times that so it's going to be sine 4x to the power of a half plus and then x times all of this so it's x times 2 which is 2x times cosine 4x over sine 4x to the power of a half. Okay, before I continue, this is now my g dash of x. Okay, so I can simplify this a little bit. Um, let's make it into one fraction to make it look a bit simpler. So I have sine 4x to the power of a half. And this is over 1, so I have to multiply these together. That gives me sine of 4x. 
Okay, because it's both to the power of a half. It's like you multiply them together, it gets to the power of one, and I have one times two x cosine four x. That looks a bit easier to deal with. And I need to know, okay, at the maximum or the minimum, g dash of x is equal to zero. Okay, so I need to equate this function to zero and then um, solve it. So I've got sine of 4x plus 2x cosine of 4x over sine 4x to the power of a half is equal to zero. Okay, so if I multiply both sides by sine x to the power of a half, now it doesn't matter now what I multiply by because it's equals, it's not inequality, so no problem. So I've got sine of 4x plus 2x cosine of 4x equals 0. Okay, so now it tells us here to show that the x coordinate of m satisfies this equation. Okay, tan 4x plus kx. So this is, when I solve this, I'll find the x coordinate of where the gradient is 0. So I have to show that this will become that. So you can see there's a tan here, tan 4x. And here I've got sine and cosine. And I know that there's an identity that the tan of theta is equal to the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta. So I could use this if I divide both sides of the equation by cosine theta, what's gonna or cosine four x, sorry, by cosine four x, this will become sine four x over cosine four x, which gives us our tan four x. And this will be two x times cosine four x divided by cosine for x equals zero, you divide zero by anything, it stays at zero. Um, so this will be give, give us tan 4x plus, and the cosine 4x will disappear, cancel out, plus 2x equals zero, and that's exactly the form that I had to show. And it says, well, k is a constant to be found, so we can say here that k is equal to two. And there we have the answer to question four part, a part two. Okay, so that's the answer to question 4a part 2, all right, which is to do with basically differentiation, but here we had to deal with trig functions, differentiating. Um, we did we did use the product rule, and we had some trig uh, differentiation, so we had to know our identity. So the identities, the trig identities, are very, very important for us. Okay, now I think this has another part to it. Does it, or is that the end of it? I think that's the end of it. Four, okay, yeah, that's the end of the question. We did four part. B, yeah, we had four, all right, so for one part A and part B, okay, and then this was four part two, yeah, and that was the end of it. So that's the end of question number four, which is all it seems here about differentiation. So we start off with part A using the quotient rule, and then part B was basically using, uh, understanding the the, what the increasing and decreasing functions are. This is something that was introduced in P2. And then the last part of the question was, uh, again, differentiation using the product rule. So the whole of this question is all about different types of differentiation and different aspects of it. And um, other questions from um, this paper of uh, January 2020 will be found in this playlist that should appear somewhere in this area here. And there'll be another playlist here somewhere which also will take you to all the questions that I've answered on P3 type integration and you'll have a button if you haven't subscribed to subscribe if you wish to over here and a link to take you to another P3 paper maybe one of the sample papers um, thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon